Hey Flourishing Your Faith fam, it's Alexis here. If you're on your daily walk, drive to work slash school, or simply just making dinner, I pray these conversations bring glory to God and draw you closer to Him. I decree that your relationship with Jesus will flourish and fruit will be the evidence of that. Today, I have my wonderful sister Allison yet again on the podcast, actually, but in person this time. Um, This is only a video episode just because I'm still having technical difficulties with my camera, um, but we have decided just to do the audio today. So it's still going to be on YouTube if you're there on YouTube, but it'll just be the audio. So, hey, Allison. Hey, guys. So excited to be here on the podcast again. Yeah. So I've been asking or I've been kind of telling all my solo episodes, but I want to bring it into the group episodes, what the Lord is teaching you right now. Yeah, so the Lord is teaching me a lot of things right now, um, and he's, he's really showing me or teaching me how to be still, and just like the scripture says in Psalm forty six ten, be still and know that I am God, he's truly challenging me and stripping that away, all the things that, I, that I'm comfortable with or good or bad. And just really making me, forcing me to rely on him and not be in control. And within that, it's so great. But at the same time, it can be very hard. Mm -hmm. um, Because sometimes when God completely turns things around in your life and changes things to where you're like, this doesn't make sense. But you know that he, but he's just, all he's telling you is to be still and know that he's God. Yep. And so that can be a hard place to be in when you don't know what the next steps may look like or what God's doing exactly. But at the same time, we have peace of knowing that, you know, it says, be still and know that I'm God because he's in control. He's the one fighting for you. He's the one making a way and he's the one who has, knows all the plans for your life. So it all works out in the end, but the process um, and the waiting and the moments of being still can be hard, but... Being still and knowing that he's God and letting him do the work produces much fruit, even if you can't see it yet. Yeah, I feel like I'm with that verse, it makes me think of the contrary of it when people are just they know about God, but they're not being still. And they know about like they have they know Jesus, they go to church every Sunday, but like they're still running and still like trying to like it's kind of like a works based thing. If you think of works based, faith, 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 faith. Um, makes you think of workspace faith because they're just like striving and striving and striving when all this, when you know literally the word says to be still and know that I'm God and he'll work everything out we don't need to keep on striving and keep on striving right. um, and trying to work things out ourselves because especially in this day and age everything comes so easy but then when it comes to the Bible and things of God and the promises of God sometimes it seems like it comes a little bit later or comes like not as quick as we want it to but I think it's because his ways are higher than ours and also like The time frame in heaven is so different than ours. Like, literally so different. (laughs) Yeah. It's so crazy. So, also on the podcast uh, Instagram, if you're not following it, go follow it at at Flourishing and Faith Podcast on Instagram. I post a little question box there for everybody to put some questions in for each episode. And I have a couple questions from this episode. The first one is, I thought it was kind of funny, they asked if we're twins. That's, no, we are not twins. How old? Are you, how old are you, Allison? I am twenty one, and I'm twenty. And I'm twenty. You also, I'm, I just turned eighteen. So, <laughs> and Allison turned. Allison turned twenty two. I this turned twenty two this year in August. So yeah. So yeah. she, we are three years apart, almost four years apart. Um. So no, we're not twins. We literally we have we don't get that very much, but we get that sometimes when we're wearing our glasses. We look have the hair similar. Yeah. But yeah, we're not twins. So I thought that was funny. So a uh, kind of heavier one was what does it mean to be unequally yoked um and how should i deal with that in a relationship Mm, that's that's a big one um in my opinion i think and also just by the word of god like i think it's important to and valid if if you're a believer Mm -hmm. to be with someone who believes the same as you um who has the same moral standards not just with your the faith but um with how you want to live your life and the things that you agree with believe in 
And it's okay to have differences. I think that's so important because you don't want to marry, like, or be with someone that's, like, copy and paste of yourself because that would be annoying. Yeah. Um, But there's certain things as Christians that we just can't... Um, I feel like it's just not fruitful. No, it's it doesn't help you grow, but there's certain things as Christians that we just can't let slide by. Yeah. Like, if you're a Christian and you're wanting to date someone who doesn't believe in God and is an atheist... You can still love them and be their brother and sister in Christ, but it's not smart to date them and think that you're going to be able to convert them. Yeah. Like, that is not your responsibility. All for you sure. have to do is love them as a brother and sister in Christ and pray for them. But it's not smart for you, in my opinion, to be with that person if... Um, like, also unequally yoked goes for friendships, too. Yeah, and, like, no, well, I will say for friendships, I think, like, you're going to have friends that I you know. don't believe. But I think but in your close friend circle, the yeah. per- the people that you tell everything, everything to, to or, you need, or get advice from, like, you know, you right. should really be it careful. Needs to be specific people that you know are walking yeah. in the faith. I wanted to bring out the, actually, the verse that talks about this in the Bible. It's actually in Second Corinthians 6. 14 and it says do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness what accord has christ with Baal, or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever what agreement has the temple of god with idols Mm -hmm. for we are the temple of the living god as god said i will make my dwelling among them and walk among them i will be their god and they shall be my people therefore go out from their midst and be separate from them says the lord and touch no unclean thing then i will welcome you and i will be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me says the lord almighty so there's actually a promise attached to that I mean, he says, I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters. You will be, you will be ident- identified as that if you touch no no clean thing, and you're separate from mm-hmm. them, and you're you're separate from those things. Yes. Um, and I think that makes, makes it a big difference. Now that I look at it, it makes a different perspective on that, because it's a promise attached to it. And I right. think I, I want to be called daughter. I want to be yeah. called son. I want to be called those things, and I want him to be my father. And I think we whenever we do have fellowship or we're yoked with unbelievers, it really, um, it just really messes up our, um, identity because then we identify with those people. Well, too, if you're trying to go deeper in the Lord or, and have a relationship with him, it's hard. It's possible to do that when you're dating someone or in friendship with people who aren't believers but or aren't maybe like maybe not even maybe they are a believer but they aren't growing they yeah. may be stagnant in their faith or they may be compromising part of the gospel mm. in order to get that's their why own you pleasures. can sometimes be unequally yoked with believers sometimes like in relationships wise because like mm-hmm. not every believer like just because he's a christian doesn't mean like that's like your person, person. or that like, he believes the way you believe or because i mean he, they could be a christian but at the same time they not they may not believe in the holy spirit like they're not right. their denomination may not believe in the holy spirit it's well, just not like, even that just like or just certain different things like they might they don't they don't believe the signs and wonders still occur today because some denominations don't so that may interfere and, with what you believe in right so there's a lot that goes into that above all i feel like if you are in a relationship or a friendship and you don't feel like peace about being with that person relationally no matter what that relationship is like yeah and if you if you don't feel peace number one if it's gonna be peace. two if you don't if you feel like this person is helping you grow or not closer to the lord because ultimately whoever your significant other is or your close-knitted friends they should be the people in your life that are helping you get closer to the Lord. Yeah. And if they're not, then they're not for you. That doesn't mean that you outrightly are rude to them or you don't show them love of Christ and you don't be kind to them and still, like, be, obviously be friends. But they might not mean to be the people that are really close to you because it can hinder you whether you realize it or not. Yeah. It can in hinder, the long term. It just can hinder a lot of things. Your relationship with God and your identity in God because then you start identifying with other things 
um, because you're friends with them and you start identifying with that friend group, identifying with that group of people or identify with what they believe in even right. because if you're friends with them and then also leaves a bad impression on other people looking at you. They're like, oh, you are, you're dating an atheist. Do you believe that too? Right. Are you an atheist? No. Then why are you dating an atheist? People from the outside will look at that and see that. And I mean, you have influence on people whether you know it or not. Yeah. So another question is my good friend Haley. She said, what do y'all think about the new age college college culture from a Christian perspective? You know, like new age, like the, all that kind of stuff. What do you, can you like this, do you know more about that than I do? I feel like, I don't know any of these terms. (laughs) New age is very, it's like, so people that don't know, um, from my, from what I've observed, I'm, (laughs) the new age, yeah, look it up real quick, but I, from what I've, from what I can think of, new age is the, um, like manifestation stuff like that like manifesting stuff and like um crystals and all that kind of stuff like just being very like spiritual but like not holy spirit spiritual yes it's like new age not that like new college culture because i feel like it's a lot it's a lot in the college age group um, Allison does go to a Christian school, so she doesn't really experience yeah, that's this what I was as like, much. What is this? Now, <laughs> now, if my best friend Sierra was here, she'd be able to tell you all about it. No, if no, Sierra's not in New Age anymore. She's not in that anymore. The Lord delivered her. <laughs> um, no, but, Alexis is gonna actually. Allison's gonna look it up a little bit, but yeah. kind of how you what I think first. about it, I think it's demonic. Mm. I think I'm. I'm just gonna say it straight up. I think it's demonic. I don't think it's anything of God, um, because it's. It's looking to other spiritual things that is not the Holy Spirit. And if you're thinking about spiritual things, that's just demonic. That's literally, because, like, that thing, like I said in the previous episodes, I think it's two episodes ago, talking about how the spiritual world is so real. It's just looking to everything but God for healing, for, um, for, like, you know, even just, like, um, peace of mind and just clarity on things, which is, like, so, it's just things is so stupid. And also, I think um, it kind of reminds me of like in like the seventies movement when it was like talking about like 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 you know have y'all seen the Jesus Revolution movie talking about like the seventies whenever they were like that new like the druggies and like the hippies and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. It's kind of like that, but for our day and age. Um, and it's like they just need Jesus. Yeah. If y'all no. haven't seen Jesus Revolution movie, you can really go watch it. It's really great. But um. Is there anything that you you see, Allison? Um, not in particular. I'd have to do like more research on it. Research on but it. But from what I was saying, what do you think about it? Well, just also just based on one of my good friends, Sierra's her experience, and I'm not gonna share any of that just because that's you. You guys need to go watch her testimony on YouTube. Yes, I'll, I'll link it below. Her name's Sierra Tarantino, and she's amazing. I'm gonna link it in her and my um in the show notes below. And her and I are starting a podcast. We just have our first podcast episode went up yesterday really? yeah. y'all need to go look at that i'll put it also i'll put that in the show notes too what is it about your testimonies it's, no it's just like an introduction and like who we are what 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 are we what we're about what we want that's do. so amazing yeah so we'll have that in the show notes too so you can kind of get introduced to sierra she's amazing and the lord has really just brought her out and transformed her life right but. so specifically like if you really like for Haley, the one who asked this question if you really want to know a lot a more information about you really need to go to her testimony yes video. you need to go watch her testimony it's so good and she goes into detail about different things like that but from her from, from her our, pers- her from experience Allison's, from Alice's perspective this is what she thinks but and like I know exactly what you said Alexis I feel like Sierra would agree with you too um based on her experience not to speak for her but um I agree I think it's anything that is not of the Lord is that is trying to be spiritual is an idol and it's mm-hmm. a, another way for you to like feel happy and like fill that void in our hearts that we all like have drugs. you know what i mean yeah. it's like a different type of drug but like it's not like you're not getting high off of it right and it's not even like like i feel like everyone well i know everyone has a desire in their heart to be loved yeah and to be cared for and to be seen and people nowadays, especially between the ages of, I would even say 16 to mm-hmm. 25. Even 14. Yeah, even even younger than that. Yeah. I think 14, high school age. High, middle, early. Late middle school. 
like high school and even in college. In, in college. Yeah, or even out of college. We, and but majority that's kind of where it kind of the youth of our age basically. But I I know that everyone everyone no matter what age you are you want to be yeah. loved and seen and cared for, but. I feel like even more so now, people are just going to to anything and everything. Yeah. Just to fill that void in their heart, to be loved, to be mm-hmm. healed, to get whatever they need. Um, and but the thing about those, the things of this world, like drugs or sex or crystals or tarot cards or um, anything fill the like a, a boyfriend a boyfriend that maybe is not good for you or yeah. a girlfriend or whatever um or just hanging out with the wrong crowd or you can do this could literally be, be anything so many things mm-hmm. but those things they're temporary compared to having a relationship with the lord with the one who made you and the yeah. one who truly knows you and the ones who loves you and his love never ends and then it never runs out. It's his love is eternal. It's, it will never, mm-hmm. it never goes away. And that's the thing about the things of this world and like drugs and crystals and um, all these different yeah. things that will give you this spiritual high or a high for a second. It But God's, the things that the God can give you last for eternity. And like also it's just like, it's so, it's literally by chance that you may get like some type of like maybe get some type of healing or something like that like that that and even if you do it's literally i i truly believe it's at a, it's at a cost it's at a cost like it's at a cost of your soul it's at a cost of like your well-being but at the same time living for jesus is at a cost because you have to deny yourself yes but, but it's a you cost. gain so much it's the internal value right and the same thing for the other way but it's eternal in the other way and i think right. it's so i was talking to one of my friends this week and i was like you know it's so funny like in all those movies that, that are like they were like eternals or like people that are like literally eternal but like think about it we are literally eternal right like every one of us are eternal beings so mm-hmm. like we are going to live forever but it's just like one way has hope and one way has death yeah and we have hope and i think i'm not going to compromise you know maybe compromise maybe because you know maybe this will work when i know and i have hope that in the lord you know i'll go to heaven and i'll be there forever right and And i I don't want to compromise that for and i feel like we don't really talk about that much like even if you're a believer or you you don't or you don't know where you're at with the lord or maybe you don't know what you believe there is a reality that is death mm-hmm. and that we will all face. And it sounds morbid and it sounds scary. But death is actually life but in I, some I, ways. Yeah, it actually is. And for those who believe, it's, we have hope mm-hmm. that this earthly death is not permanent. Or that's permanent and our <laughs> earthly bodies will die. But our, spirit. our spirits mm-hmm. are eternal. So we have hope in that and... So yeah. when we rely on the Lord and we have him as our main thing. Like, that's makes me like, I'm just like, that's why I'm not scared of death. Yeah. I'm like, it's literally, I'm going to heaven. Right. Like, I'm going to be like living my best life up there. And the last question is, what did you guys study in the Bible today? Happy Friday. Have a good day. Thank you. It is Friday. Day before. Yeah, it's good Friday. Good Friday, everybody. Um, so what did we read? We, I read in um, Proverbs. And Second Corinthians, and you read Second Corinthians too, right? Yeah, I read. I'm reading, trying to read through Joshua, and I am towards the beginning of that. I just started that earlier this week, and then I am reading Second Corinthians as well. I try to read like a little bit of Old Testament and something same. new every yeah. day, but yeah, yeah, it's been good. We said it at the same time. I know. Anywho, we love you guys, and don't forget to subscribe or, you know, hit a five-star review for our podcast and all the things, and also go down below to see Allison's socials and Allison and Sierra's podcast called The Overflow, and it's so exciting to have her on here, and hopefully, if y'all comment down below, maybe we can get Sierra on the podcast next time, and all the things, so love y'all, see y'all next time. Okay, bye!